What's up guys, Phoenix here, and I'm here with an Infernoid deck profile, more specifically the deck list used by Sean Rye at the ARG 25k this past weekend. Now this deck did get top 32, I believe it actually got as far as top 16 before it was knocked out of contention for first place. Now this event did take place under the ARG format that was running at the time, so you may be sitting there wondering, Phoenix, why are you covering this as an Infernoid deck profile that's not relevant to Konami format? At that point, I would like to tell you that you are wrong. This deck's functionality and the way that it is built, the way that it plays, all of those are identical between ARG format and Konami format. The only thing that changes between those formats is a slightly, slightly minuscule, small amount of technical play. But as far as the way the deck functions, the way it's built, everything is identical. It has the same pool of cards accessible to it. All of this nonsense is identical. So I believe that the information we can draw from this deck list being that this was the first TCG event where Infernoid Decatron and you know the Clash of Rebellions support cards were legal. I believe the information that we can pull from this deck list to build the deck in the future, make it better, I believe that to be overly relevant. As I do enjoy the Infernoid archetype as a whole, I just don't know if I enjoy playing it or not. But anyway, the deck list that he decided to register and play was one copy of Infernoid Anunku, one copy of Infernoid Deviati, three copies of Atondal, two copies of Seismus, three copies of Petrulia, three copies of Harmadic, two copies of Antra, two copies of Pyramice, three copies of Decatron, and the lone Raiden Hand of the Light Sworn to be an alternative reasoning and Monster Gate hit. Now this is something that I've been talking with a lot of my friends about as well, playing a single copy of Raiden, maybe two, just to give your opponent the ability to mess up off reasoning, because if you're not playing it, your opponent calls one, they have a 100% uh, you know, ratio of calling the right number because they're going to call one to hit Decatron. Whereas if you have Raiden in the deck in any number of quantity, that is another card that gets you out of the early game as well as another card that you can hit off reasoning that could allow your opponent to essentially screw up. With one Raiden and three Decatron, they have a 25% chance of calling it wrong at the worst of times because if you have all three Decatrons left in the deck, that would be four total cards that you can hit off of the reasoning. Raiden being one of them, that's 25%. Now, any amount of Decatrons that you've drawn or gotten out of the deck by that point, the ratio for you know the success of hitting Raiden when they call one only increases. So I believe that you know playing Raiden is definitely correct, even though some people have chose to cut it. Anyway, that aside, three copies of Reasoning, one copy of Monster Gate, one for one for one, just to be an additional outlet into Decatron, Burial for the obvious recursion, triple Upstart Goblin for consistency, triple Drag Down to the Grave for the same reason. I really like this. Um, I have been testing Hand Destruction um, instead of this card, but I can definitely see its merits alongside the Triple Mind Crush. Uh, only two copies of Void Seer, Triple Mind Crush, and Double Torrential is in the trap lineup. Now the side deck is one Majesty's Fiend, one Spell Canceler, and one Thunder King. Again, just really good cards to hit off Reasoning to lock your opponents out of the game, depending on what deck they are playing. They are more than likely going to be calling one, so they don't get, you know hit with Decatron and blown out with whatever effect that you're going to send off Decatron, in which case you'll either reveal a Thunder King, Spell Cancellor, or Majesty's Fiend and potentially lock them out of the game with that with those monsters from there. Um, I'm honestly surprised there's not Jinzo in this side deck for the exact same reason. Triple MST, three Light Imprisoning Mirror, three Breakthrough Skill, double Decree, and one Mistake, because Mistake is at one in ARG format. Um, I'm pretty sure if Mistake was at more than one, you'd probably play more copies of that in this deck, simply because this deck does zero searching unless you want to play Void Vanishment, um, which is a card I personally really enjoy. It's probably my favorite card in the Infernoid deck. Um, extra deck for the Exceeds, Evil Swarm Exciton Knight, Castell the Skyblaster Musketeer, and Gym Knight Pearl. Now, the issue, the thing with Gym Knight Pearl, as well as Gaia Knight, the Force of the Earth, as well as Scrap Archfiend that you will see in this extra deck, is that they are not effect monsters, thus they do not count towards the 8 level slash rank total that the Infernoids have as their summoning restriction. Because the monsters aren't effect monsters, they do not have effects, they do not count towards that. So that's why cards like Pearl, Gaia Knight, and Scrap Archfiend are played in Infernoid decks, in case you weren't wondering why they are there. They are kind of just there to be just big, you know, just generic beaters that can reduce the amount of levels of effect monsters you have on the board to allow you to go into different plays. Uh, for rank 7s, he played Big Eye and Draco Sack. For rank 8s, he played Alse, the Sylvan High Protector, as well as Divine Dragonite Felgrin. Now, S Alse, the theory behind that, at least the way that I've been playing the deck, if you ever are in a situation to make Alse, 
you literally make Alce and call a card that you will win if you draw. Um, <laughs> so, like, you literally, like, make Alce and call Reasoning and, you know, reveal it. Um, if it's Reasoning, it comes to your hand. If it's not, it was another card that is probably going to have more benefit in the graveyard anyway, like an Infernoid card, and then you'll be able to bounce cards as well. It's a very good card to both further your own game state or answer established boards, and Felgrand is just Felgrand. For the Synchros, Armadis... Guy Knight, Force of the Earth, Vanilla, as I said before, doesn't count towards the level 8 restriction. Black Rose, for obvious board clearing. Scrap Archfiend, again, does not count towards the 8 uh, level slash rank um, restriction of all the Infernoids because it does not have an effect. Scrap Dragon and Crimson Blader are level 8s. Ally of Justice Decisive Armor and Star Eater are the last two Synchros in his uh, extra deck. Now, I'm not sure how often he was expecting to make Decisive Armor, but... I mean, it's there for the option because this extra deck is very loose in terms of what you can run. Um, but essentially, I'm not sure if uh, I agree completely with this list. He Obviously, it had success for him, but I feel like the deck can be built in a couple of different ways to allow different advantages advantages and disadvantages in certain situations. Um, I definitely am a fan of the one Raiden, you know, theory. Um, the drag downs and mind crushes seem really cool, um, in theory, in a vacuum. I haven't tested that kind of, you know, interaction yet, but it definitely might be something that is correct moving forward, especially since, you know, drag down is, you know, the obvious thing where you'll just, like, set every spell and trap in your hand, summon your Decatron and do its thing with that, and then you'll play drag down, leaving the only cards in your hand being, like, the big Infernoids that get their effects out of Grave anyway, um, and, or, you know, are just fuel for other Infernoids, and you'll take a card out of your opponent's hand, and then you have information for Mind Crush to follow up on. Um, obviously, Torrential is not at two in Konami format, but it's definitely still a powerful enough card to run one of, as well as you can supplement this with another card like Warning or Emptiness or something. Um, there's definitely changes you can make to this for Konami format. Um, as far as a deck list that I would run, this probably isn't the one that I would run. I definitely am interested in testing it, uh, but I'm I'm more interested in the own in my own uh, theories on you know the Infernoid deck as a whole and going from there. But anyway, that is all for this video. I just wanted to talk about this deck and explain some of the choices. Um, explain some things about this deck. I really like the fact of the way that this deck is built to literally just do what it's supposed to do. It's built to get to its win condition and nothing else. I really enjoy that. I really like that. It's very streamlined, but I feel like there are different you know, potential ways that this deck can be played moving forward to give it a better success rate. I'm not sure. That's something that we can only find out through testing. But, as always guys, comment, rate, subscribe, like the video if you'd like to support myself and my content's growth now and in the future. Links are in the description to both my Facebook pages. Go to either link and do the appropriate action with either. Click on that if you have not. I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps me make money and there's no reason to lie to you guys about that. But I'd be completely understanding and I would not be offended nor take it personally if you decided you did not want to. Just know that it helps me out immensely if you decide to do so. And that is it for this video. As I've already said, as always guys, take care. If you like Infernoids, uh, expect some more videos in the future for me doing some Infernoid games because I like, I kind of like playing the deck in an online setting. But, as I've already said, take care, guys.